G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Thanks for watching Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're at Gallery Aquatica and we've got a tank that a lot of people have been wanting to see. Today we're going to look at my personal display tank. So my display tank is six feet by three feet wide. It's a peninsula tank and it holds a thousand liters. Now we're going to have a bit of a look at how we have the water flow set up in this system. We're gonna look at the lighting, we're gonna look at the supplementation, and we're gonna look at all the different aspects of this tank that make it tick. But first of all, let's have a look at the aquascape. So being a peninsula tank, the rock work of this system is particularly important. And the way we have done the rock work is so that we've got spaces down either side of the tank, space at the front. We have lots of caves throughout the rock work. And this allows us to basically have six feet on this side, six feet on the other side. So we have 12 feet of viewing space on this tank. So we'll have a look at the fish and the corals and then we'll get into the gear on this tank. Every section of this tank has a story behind it. And the first thing that I'll point out is a little Leptosiris garden or low light encrusters that we've got down here. And so we've got multiple colors. We actually use these uh, colonies as mother colonies for taking frags that onion will use to uh, sell in the shop. We have a number of bird's nest colonies. Now, these started out as a single frag and they've grown. Some sections have died off, other sections have flourished. And really, the, the way I typically reef with my own tanks is I tend to leave the skeletons of the older corals in the tank. And I find that that does help to create the aquascape and create a, quite a natural look. A lot of people like to pull out the dead skeletons, skeletons and I totally understand that. Um, however, I typically will leave them in there. And here's a really good example. This big bowl shaped section behind the bird's nest, um, which the Pocky is actually sitting on, that was once a huge confuser colony. And it looked really, really good in there. It encrusted onto the rock work and it actually died because it was smothered and stung by a hydnophora. And so I've left it in there because it does create an interesting shape in there and it's created this little ledge that we can grow uh, other corals on. So around this side, there's a really cool Leptosiris, uh, an orange-eyed Leptosiris, and you can see it's kind of grown into place and it's melting across the, uh, this ledge here. Looks really good. We've got a variety of chalices. Now, I previously had a large green scrolling Monty in this section here, and it was the feature of the tank. It just got to a point where it was so big that it actually collapsed under its own weight. And so I removed it and I've recently just found another piece that's quite similar that I'm going to use to put back in its place. And I've got this down the bottom here, but unfortunately it has a little bit of Montipora eating nubrank, so I have to fix that before I glue it back into place. There's a couple of uh, colonies of coral at the top here and they're coming on this ledge out towards us. The bird of paradise and there's a couple of acros and you can see that whilst they look good there, they're actually starting to shade uh, the spaces underneath. And previously there are a lot of corals in this area here, but because these top corals are growing out and shading that area, it's a bit more difficult for us to keep corals in that section. The Dallas uh, Acropora is doing fairly well in here. Uh, I like the position of it at this height because it doesn't really sort of take over too much. There's this really cool little uh, rose Pavona, uh, Pavona Maldaventus coming up through this little hole in the rock work. That whole area was once a Monty which has been uh, overgrown and is now basically just rock. The Duncan coral was one of the first corals in here and again all the other corals have just grown over it and sort of created it, uh, squeezed it out into this small section now. And we have had a problem with the 
da uh, purple daisy polyps being growing out of control and we rip them out quite regularly and they're uh, I pull them back almost to put out almost all of them recently and they're already coming back we have this twisty turban which is one of my favorite corals that you don't often see for sale in Australian reef shops and uh, it's a really easy coral to frag it creates this real beautiful reticulated pattern uh, we got this off a, a friend of ours Derek and uh, I'm glad to have two colonies of it We've also got a few bits and pieces on the bottom. This isn't really a, a full SBS by any means. It's really more a mixed reef. We've got this great big symphilia down the bottom here and the Corella morphs. Um, all sorts of things get put into this tank. Uh, and that's one of the challenges for me with my display tank being in the aquarium store is that we do use it for a variety of purposes. But this is it. This is my display tank. Um, it's taken us a year and a half to show this tank off and uh, I really wanted to uh, put this up on our channel because I wanted to show people what it was like in, when we started using the Triton so that when it's really cranking in another six months time we can come back to it and see how everything's grown. This tank is central in our shop and given the size, not just the length and the width of this tank, but also the height, it really is a major feature of the store. Now this hood is very interesting and you can see it is an incredibly tall hood, which is great because it fully encloses the lighting system and hides it. But the lights are one of the features of this tank, so let's open up the, the hood and have a look. As you can see, we have six Radions. Uh, most of them are Gen 3 Pros. There's also some Gen 4 Pros. And the best thing about the way these, these lights are mounted on the tank is that they're suspended on a mounting system that has got angles either side, which allows the lights to really focus down to the corals. And it perfectly complements the rock work of this tank. It's a really good lighting system. Now let's talk about the flow in this tank because that's also a really interesting aspect of this system. On this end of this tank, we've got the two Gaia style wave makers. Now one is the original Gaia 150, this one is actually Glamorca 300, and the idea of these two wave makers is to push water across the surface so that there's really strong water agitation at the surface, and it's also important because the tank is so wide that we do have a nice wide broad amount of water flow pushing down over the structure. Now whilst these wave makers are relatively obvious being on the end of the tank there are two other wave makers that you probably won't have seen. Let's have a look at those. The first is an Octo Pulse and you can see it's hidden in here it's tucked in quite neatly on this side. This tank has an overflow with three drains that lead down to the sump. And so there's a perfect little alcove for this wave maker and it's a very neat way of having this wave maker. The one on the other side of the tank is one step better.
we have an MP40 on this side. Now, the beauty of the MP40 is that we have the wet side in the tank, and if you look closely, you'll see it. However, the dry side is hidden perfectly in this cabinet. We also have the power control center in this cabinet. We've got our e-coral light that allows us to control a variety of systems, including the dosing. We'll look at that in a sec. And basically, this is a way that we can hide uh, cords and cables and everything that's powering this tank. Let's have a look underneath the tank at the filtration system. So we're underneath the tank and you can see that there's a very large sump. It's a five foot by two foot sump. And right here, we've got our refugium. Now, you can see the light on the refugium is not actually on at the moment. That's because we run a reverse uh, cycle uh, photo period. In other words, the refugium light comes on at the opposite times to the tank above us. Now, the skimmer is relatively small for the size of the tank. This is a NIOS 220, but it does the job really well. We keep it fairly clean and there isn't a, a huge number of fish in the tank so really this is adequate i think if i had my time again i probably would have gone the nios 300 uh, however it is difficult to get the skimmer in and out of this system so i'm happy with this one for now i'll come around the other side and we'll look at the dosing system interestingly with this tank we've recently swapped our supplements over to the triton method now we're really happy with how it's going so far and it works perfectly with our four channel doser because with the Triton method, there's actually four supplements that need to be dosed at equal amounts. The first is calcium, the second is magnesium, and the elk is split across the third and fourth vessels. So each of these are dosing in at the same volume per day. Now we check the calcium, KH, mag, as well as the phosphate, nitrate, pH, salinity, of this system, but we really focus on the elk. Now, our intention is to always keep the elk at 7.3, and with close attention to the stability of the elk, this system works beautifully, and the corals really respond well. And in the time that we've been using this, uh, the Triton method on this tank, things have really started to look better. So uh, that's our episode of Gallery Aquatica TV for today. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.